The Elimination Chamber match was nothing short of interesting, entertaining, and crazy, and we're so ready to talk about it. Welcome to Aftermath TV, everyone. Caroline, Jimmy, Anthony, and Nug here with you, the regular crew at the desk. Guys, what an interesting pay-per-view mm -hmm. that we watched on Sunday night. Yeah. We're going to dive right into it with our wins and fails. And Jimmy, we're going to start with you. And you liked uh, something in Ronda Rousey. Absolutely. I mean, there's that old adage that you only get one chance to make a first impression. Technically, this was second because she did show up at the Rumble and kind of upstage all the women by showing up and pointing at the WrestleMania sign. <laughs> at Elimination Chamber was a time for her to make a statement and really connect with the WWE Universe. I think she did that. And then some by putting Triple H through a table, getting slapped by Stephanie and showing like different ranges of emotion. You know what I mean? Being happy to be there, like Nug, we were talking about this, being happy to be there, which she very much is. And then that flipping that switch and all of a sudden she's in beast mode. And, and I just thought it was a perfect debut for her. Yeah, I think she said all the right things to win everybody over and, and said, look, I don't want to be, you know, gifted any certain status. I want to earn it all. I want to earn your respect. Um, and I thought she did really well, and that's a different environment. That, that's, you know, like you, you did theater and now you're in the circus. It's a different environment, but I thought she transitioned very well, and she looks like she belongs there. Yeah, she is very happy to be there, which is evident, but I've, you know, I've watched a little bit of UFC, but she's always been a badass, and here she comes out smiling and happy to be there. I was waiting for the badass to show up, and the badass showed up on Sunday. Well, this is exactly my win, Jimmy. We have the same one. And from the second that Ronda Rousey walks out, it's just chills. The universe loves her. You can feel her confidence and the energy and the music. Everything about her is amazing. Her throwing Triple H into that table was the biggest win for me. The universe loved it. Also, Stephanie McMahon slapping her. I was like, girl, you're crazy. Because everyone on the commentary was like, what did Ronda Rousey do when she when she threw Triple H to that table? And I'm like, what did Stephanie McMahon do? And I can just see this whole storyline evolving, and I love it. Absolutely. And anybody, and I don't know if Anthony has experienced this, I fortunately have not been a part of this, but anybody who's been slapped by <laughs> Stephanie McMahon, uh, some of them I've even heard refer to it as, I'd rather be slapped by the big show than Stephanie McMahon. That's yeah, how hard she is. She's pretty good at slapping. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny because they didn't really, uh, Triple H was in the ring on Monday and they didn't really talk about the fact, you know, he should be a little upset. <laughs> he got put through a table. Mm -hmm. uh, but even even the delivery, she's, she's going to do really, really well. Also, though, if you're Stephanie McMahon and you're slapping Ronda Rousey, are you like, oh my, oh my goodness, something worse is even like is coming my way? Oh, Ronda think, Rousey. Yeah, she held, <laughs> she held restraint and uh, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's you coming. can see it's the look coming. in her eye though. She definitely uh, um, waked up, uh, awoke, awoke the beast. She absolutely so did. Nug, moving on to your win. Uh, you love Miss Alexa Bliss. I do love Alexa Bliss, <laughs> uh, and I thought her winning the Elimination Chamber was uh, fantastic. I liked the way she won it, but it was her interview after the match that sold me on Alexa Bliss. I mean, not that I haven't been sold on Alexa Bliss, but she she was so emotional and teary and saying all these nice things about it. Just shows women out there that you can have dreams <laughs> and they don't matter. <laughs> and that crowd was right in the palm of her hand and it just shows how good Alexa Bliss has gotten and continues to get since she moved up from NXT. She's held titles on both shows. She is the goddess right How now. How believable was she from the moment where she was just like, oh, you know, follow your dreams, and then it's like, but they'll never come that's, true. It was and I'm so like, good. I love you. She got me almost as bad as Mark Henry got me with that <laughs> retirement <laughs> with that, Yeah. The old she salmon was, colored she, jacket? Yeah, she was actually that good on the mic where I'm like going, okay, this is different from Alexa Bliss. What's going on? And then I get... She got me. But I'm excited. I'm excited about the women's title because Asuka still hasn't decided where she's going to, like, what title she wants to go after. Shinsuke Nakamura said, I pick AJ Styles. Mm -hmm. She still hasn't decided if it's Alexa Bliss or if it's going to be Charlotte. And if she picks Charlotte, I think Alexa painted herself into a corner last night on Raw because she said definitively, Nia Jax deserves to be in the title match at WrestleMania. So if Asuka picked yeah. Charlotte, the champ herself picked her opponent. Yeah, the one thing that I don't understand, though, is Michael Cole referred to last night that uh, she will be facing Alexa Bliss at, at WrestleMania for the championship. But she, like you said, she hasn't, hasn't actually said that. So are they just speculating? I yeah, guess. her promo uh, last night on Monday Night Raw was also very good. And mm -hmm. she, I think she's kind of finding that little uh, pattern. She kind of was nice a little bit and swerved them again. The better her mic skills get, the bigger... 
of a superstar she's going to be. She's already a superstar, yeah. but I mean, she can really launch herself into the stratosphere yeah. with those mic skills that seem to be continuously getting better and better. Future looks bright. Yep. Yeah. From one female in the future to another, your win, Asuka? My win was Asuka, and, and part of it is not necessarily for Asuka, uh, her performance, it was kind of like, there seems to be a lot of uh, people predicting these days that are, are guaranteeing, <laughs> oh, it's obvious, so this is going to happen and this is going to happen. It's a, duh. Well, it didn't happen. And, and, and the stipulation of Nia Jax being in the match at Mania was kind of like, it got me because I'm thinking, well, what's, what's going to happen to Nia if she doesn't win? <laughs> well, she didn't win. So the fact that it was at least something shocking. It was shocking. It was unexpected. And I love when they do that because everybody knows everything now and nothing's unexpected anymore. Am, am, I a little, am I the only one here who's a little sad that Nia didn't win, though? Like, I was oh, hoping yeah. that she would. More than a little sad. Okay. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with Asuka winning because uh, the whole story with Asuka is her and her winning streak. And that right. winning streak should be going into WrestleMania. Whether it ends there or not should, is, is debatable. But going into WrestleMania, that streak should be yeah, intact. Yeah, because if Alexa, let's say Alexa pins Nia at WrestleMania, did, did she lose? Is the streak still intact? Right. It's a good point. Too many questions. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, with wins comes fails. And, Jimmy, let's start with yours. Well, mine comes from the Women's Elimination Chamber match. Not that it was a bad match. I enjoyed the match. The women deserve full marks for it. But <laughs> it, it could have been so much better if you didn't have, I'm, I'm sorry to say it, Mandy, uh, Mandy Rose and uh, Sonya Deville in the match because I don't believe they were ready for that spot. And especially in a historic match like this, there should have been two more seasoned veterans in there, which would have elevated that match to the uh, possibly stealing the show uh, level. That's so, my only. So yeah. Jimmy, if you're if you're Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose, how do you get to that next level where you can compete against these top superstars? Through experience and and participating in the ring and getting better and improving your craft. Not that they're not getting better. I'm just saying I don't think they were ready for that particular spot yet. And, and that kind of match, that yes. kind of match yes. shouldn't have come that early in their WWE career. Right. Right. Yeah. There seems to be the, the you know a pattern of. Uh, this person has potential, thrust them. So, yes, they both have potential, and perhaps they were thrust a little too soon into this match. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they're, they're, they're going to be there. We have, we have to get used to them, and they're going to improve and get more experience, and they're going to be uh, threats mm -hmm. for a yeah. long time to come. Nug, you had a problem with some of the fans? Uh, well, the fans, specifically during the Bray Wyatt-Matt uh, Hardy match. Now, I do not want to see the laughing men fight each other anymore. <laughs> I think they've fought enough, I'm sh and apparently there's going to be more, which is totally a fail for me. I can't stand it. But <laughs> at least I respected the performers enough to pay attention to the match and watch what was going on. And so whether I liked it or not, I didn't pull out a beach ball, and I didn't start chanting for wrestlers that weren't there. If I went to a Broadway show and pulled out a beach ball, I would be removed from the audience. Uh, I've paid money to go to see the WWE show. I should show respect to the performers. Yeah, and it's different. And again, Anthony, back to the day, when you didn't like what was going on in the ring, you booed. You booed or you chanted boring. The end. That was it. Thank you very much. You didn't get into this whole, okay, I'm not entertained here. Let's see if I could be the show instead of, and be part of the show. Or derail the show. Now, or that, derail the is show. that something that's being monitored, though? Like, is there, are there policies around that? Or? Well, um, it's kind of hard to find the, the guy who in, uh, initially yeah. tossed the beach ball up. Then well, and also, it's hard to pat a guy down for a deflated beach ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is disrespectful. If you don't like the match, that's fine. But yeah. don't, you know, just take it in your own hands to distract right. them. And, and these guys are still working hard. Mm -hmm. I don't like the match either. To be honest, I fast forward through it now because it, I find it really boring. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Bray Wyatt, man, if he just came to the ring, didn't say a word, had a very, very stern look in his eyes and proceeded to beat the crap out of somebody, I think that would be cool. I think that would be awesome. He's a really good wrestler. He was great it's, when he had the family. It, yes. Yeah, it's just too, it's too much now. Yeah. It's too silly. You're, you're not. You're not wizards. I, I'd almost like to see Bray Wyatt and Matt Hardy, and maybe a returning brother Nero, uh, as a gang, as a, as kind of like that family again. Something. Yeah, that would be better than opposing one. Then another. Anthony wouldn't be fast forwarding through no, it, right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, I'm excited uh, excited to talk to you about your fail because it kind of segues into mine. But Roman Reigns. Yeah, it's not. It's not Roman. That's the fail. I love Roman. Uh, Him it's, winning. It's the fact that people have were calling this win from months ago. And it's like they were so, this is kind of the opposite of the Oscar thing. They, they were 100% convinced they would have bet their house on it, and it happened. And, I mean, we got to at least swerve them a little better or give them something that...
they're not expecting. Well, now, go they've ahead, been sorry, working no. on, you know, they've told this story with Roman where he has to get back to this match with Brock Lesnar. The last time he had that match at WrestleMania with Brock Lesnar, Seth Rollins cashed in. There was no satisfying ending. So now he's got this years in the making. He's got his opportunity. Now, do I... Want to see that? No, but this is a long thing that we're finally seeing pay off. If you don't pay that thing off, oh, well, it's, oh easy. I, it's I too de- silly. I definitely want him to fight Brock at WrestleMania. Yeah. I, think, I think I want to see that that uh, redemption, but uh, deliver it in a manner that's not going to be predicted from five months out kind I, of thing, but, I think. But that's that's the nature of the business, uh, and, and we've seen it over the years, and people never had a problem with it before, but now it seems to be the cool thing to jump on the anti-Roman Reigns bandwagon, <laughs> which is a lot like groupthink, basically, and people just thinking it's the cool thing to do because if you noticed last night in his in his promo, oh, yeah. when awesome, he came out, awesome, promo. awesome promo, best I've ever seen him do. Exactly, he came out, they booed him out of the building, not and you got to remember that Las Vegas is not like New York or Philly or Chicago or L.A. Uh, he came out, they booed because that's what they're programmed to do. But by the end of it, they were cheering. Yeah. He turned that crowd 180, and that's a sign of a guy who's got the it. Audience, the audience believed, and I believe he, they, they did, see someone who wasn't performing, and they saw his true feelings, and mm-hmm. the, 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 the entire uh, feelings of the locker room. And it's true, hey, he's not there, and he's not going up and down the road with everybody. Right. He's not taking the bruises and lumps that everyone else takes. He shows up and beats people up and he disappears again and that is super frustrating for everybody and I don't know if his opinion is supposed to be suppressed because we don't want to insult the beast incarnate but um, he did a great job at letting me believe he said you know what screw it I'm going to get in trouble but these are my thoughts Mm -hmm. and everyone appreciated that and he actually got got cheered yeah it was Mm -hmm. really cool we'll we'll talk more about Brock after the break but I kind of want to go off of your fail being Roman Reigns it's all predictable what really bothered me is that Braun Strowman was an absolute beast in the Elimination Chamber. He eliminated five other superstars, which I believe is a record at the Elimination it Chamber. It is. The old record was he, three. Yes, yeah. and he, and you saw John Cena. He catches John three. Cena in midair and tosses him aside like he's a bag of potatoes. And I'm like, Braun Strowman's going to win this. Braun Strowman's going to win this. And then to have him not and Roman Reigns wins, I'm kind of just like, I'm a little let down. And I think it is super predictable, and I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm a Strowman fan, but I wasn't all for it. Well, it helps. I need someone to review the statistics and check. I think I Goldberg, Undertaker, and Carlito had three eliminations. I think I had three. Well, we'll check the record books. Cody Rhodes. In one match? Yeah. Oh, we'll check the record books, guys. Get on the Google machine. We'll check the record books, but right now, uh, we have to to go for a break, guys. When we get back, we'll talk more about Brock Lesnar and some speculation. Brock Lesnar is an entitled piece of crap who hides behind his contract. I mean, think about it, y'all. Think about it. We are six weeks from WrestleMania, and the Universal Champion is not here today. We were in Vegas last night. Brock was in Vegas. He wasn't at the Elimination Chamber. Guess where he was? He was running around the strip taking pictures with Dana White in the UFC on social media. You wanna know why? Because he doesn't respect me. He doesn't respect any of you. And he doesn't respect anybody in that locker room. Roman Reigns stirring the pot. I know. Uh, What's Brock Lesnar's contract going to come up to? Is he going to stay in the WWE or is he, you know, heading to UFC? It's it's interesting because uh, as Roman Reigns alluded to, he did take a picture with Dana White in Las Vegas on the same day as the Elimination Chamber. I think it's a little bit of posturing by uh, Brock Lesnar and his advocate, uh, Paul Heyman. You know, it's just it's just trying to play each other, trying to get trying to get more money out of the deal. And uh, at the end of the day, I kind of think he's going to resign with WWE. Though. Well, he's an absolute businessman. He's protecting his brand. He has two global entities, you know, bidding for him, really. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a bidding. Well, hopefully, hey, good for him. If I could orchestrate that in my life, I'd, <laughs> I'd like to have that as well. But uh, I mean, there is some responsibility to the fans, obviously. But you know, if you're strictly a businessman, you don't think of that stuff. You just think of money. He's a businessman. He gets paid. For fighting. He gets paid a lot of money to not fight a lot. 
and he fights even less when he's in UFC. I expect him to go to UFC and take that money because he doesn't fight a ton right now. And he's the champion. He could walk away from this. He doesn't care. Go to UFC. Now, does the plot thicken that Roman Reigns is the one who brought light to all of this and, you know, is, is talking about it? Well, it's so convenient that they're facing each other at WrestleMania yeah, right? and Roman Reigns is stirring the pot like this. I think <laughs> it makes perfect sense for him to try and rile up the Beast because what you want going into WrestleMania is you want the Beast to show up and, and you know, basically promote that match. And he wasn't there on Monday night after the Elimination Chamber match to promote this match, and that, to me, is a big fail. Yeah, they've, I mean, people have mentioned <laughs> his schedule before, um, mm -hmm. and, and, and I just, he's, he's getting him upset, and he's obviously going to retaliate. Uh, I thought the idea is to make him blow his fuse mm -hmm. and throw him off his game plan so he's not coming like the most... What do you call it? Focused Brock you can have. But then again, you don't want to piss off Brock. No. I think it's great that uh, Roman Reigns came out and basically said, that guy is a part-time performer, which is what John Cena said about Roman's cousin, The Rock, a few years ago mm -hmm. at WrestleMania. So it's nice to see that recycling is great. Recycling mm -hmm. still works. Yeah. Well, we'll see what else happens between the two of them. But another thing to look forward to is Fastlane. Be held on March 11th yes. in Columbus, Ohio. And guys, we know the roster for the main event. AJ Styles will be defending his title against Ziggler, Zayn, Owens, and Corbin. What are your immediate thoughts to seeing it be a five-way for the title? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of guys. <laughs> I like that it's not just Owens and Zayn because we've been seeing a lot of AJ Owens and Zayn's and combinations of that. Right. I I don't know if Corbin and Ziggler. Uh, being added to the match will make it better. But we heard John Cena last night say, I'm going to SmackDown to insert myself into the WrestleMania picture. I expect him to be added to this, too, and make it six guys. Yeah, wait a second. Last night, he, he said he, well, he called out The Undertaker and said it's not going to happen. Yeah. Why is he just aborting that so quickly? It's make impossible. It's uh, impossible. Why? Yeah. Why? He no. said it was impossible. Well, it, it, it's, <laughs> I, I know he said I think that. It, I think it's because people assume that The Undertaker is retired. And yes, we saw him lay his gloves, coat, and hat down in the ring at the end of WrestleMania last year. But if you think back to the WrestleMania prior, he laid his gloves down after the match with Shane. So this wasn't technically maybe not a retirement. It made people speculate. The, the official retirement for wrestlers to lay his boots in the ring. Yeah. He still hasn't laid his boots in the ring. So, uh, still a knowing chance. the warrior that The Undertaker is, but when, I expect when him to When a wrestler takes up. a... Is this wrestler supposed to take off his boots at, at the ring? No. Well, on the next day and night, on Monday night. Oh, night okay. Okay. That's a lot of laces. Then. It, it, it <laughs> takes a while. It takes you a hold while. on. Here. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Uh, quickly, do you guys think that AJ will be able to defend his title? He better because I want to see Shinsuke and him at Mania. Yeah, yeah, he, he better. Uh, this is a very dangerous match. There, again, I, I don't like these f five weight things. Or does Cena challenge Shinsuke for that match at WrestleMania? Oh, that'd be fun at Fastlane. <sighs> mm. Oh, well, we'll only, time will only be able to tell, so March 11th. Stay tuned, everyone. Guys, right now we got to go to break, but NXT TakeOver Tour when we're back. We were there. We were there. It was great. This is so good. The Aftermath TV panel was actually fortunate enough to go to the NXT Tour show in Mississauga, Ontario, or as the Velveteen Dream would like to say, Mississauga. <laughs> right? Yeah, you missed that, Anthony. Uh, but what do you guys think? What did you think about the tour overall and some of the superstars that we saw perform? I thought, I thought the, the it, I love the NXT brand. I love the superstars of NXT because, as I've said before, I think it's a nice bridge between new school and old school. They kind of bridge that gap mm -hmm. nicely, and I thought they all performed Beyond my expectations in, in Mississauga, great it, show. NXT is an interesting phenomenon because you have these old school coaches mm -hmm. that are battling. Okay, so the, the, when somebody wants to be a professional wrestler, they watch TV and they go, okay, I guess I'm supposed to do all that stuff because that's what I'm seeing on TV. And then you have these coaches saying, no, 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 no. That, that's really kind of not what you're supposed to be doing. So the product comes out, this hybrid of old school and new mm -hmm. school, and it's yeah. actually really good. I thought the attendances would have been a little better. Yeah. Um, but everyone that went was was pretty happy. Oh yeah, the show itself was great. I got to go to Mississauga and uh, NXT Barry, which was so much fun. Uh, seeing the show, seeing the wrestlers, uh, the superstars of NXT are amazing, and I really liked. You could turn on NXT on uh, on the network and. 
it's a great mix of all the talent they have, but it's not all of the talent they have. So on the tour, we got to see some guys that haven't really been on television yet. Right. And one of the guys that really impressed me was a young German man named Marcel Bartel. He's kind of like a German William Regal. Uh, he was fantastic. Uh, he broke uh, a 10 count. The guy was punching him on the eight, and then when he went for the ninth, he went nine and kicked the guy in the face, and I thought it was fantastic. So, Marcel Bartel, keep your eyes open. Was he counting or was he saying no? Both. Okay. Well, Nug, you may have just answered my next oh. question, but which superstar from the black and yellow brand are, is a superstar that the universe has to see? And I want to answer this first. The Velveteen Dream. Yeah. He's just so amazing. He was so great. He was so great. He's got all the tools at such a young age, too. He's only 22 years old. And he's, he's progressed this years far. Old. Yeah, he's a young, <laughs> young buck. But he, he's got it. Uh, the other guy to watch out for that hasn't been really on, on NXT television, Ricochet. Oh. This guy is going to be a superstar like you wouldn't believe. He, those he, who know his history yeah. can tell you that, but those who haven't seen him, watch out. Him and Buddy Murphy. <laughs> Uh, yes. We're on the show, open up the show in Mississauga, and we're on the show in Barry. Buddy Murphy, the best kept secret in the 205. Now he's continuing in the tournament. Buddy Murphy is a he's guy dead. you should keep your eye on, too. He's 203, so he's making the weight limit. Yeah. He's phenomenal. Yeah, Ricochet's an interesting guy. I, I knew of him for quite some time, and, and he can do some incredible mm -hmm. things gymnastics, I don't know what you call them. Video game stuff. Video yeah. game stuff, and uh, I. Uh, Okay, I'm kind of torn. I don't want wrestling to go in that direction. Too far. People are going to get hurt. Uh, and, and it's not what you want to be promoting. Because kids are going to try. We say don't try it. They try stuff. You don't want someone to jump off a roof and try and land on their feet no. and all that stuff. But that being said, he can also do other things. And yeah. wrestle, he's in tremendous shape. He's very strong. And he's agile. And if he can be, you know, I don't want to say tamed because... You don't want somewhat to tame grounded. somebody. Oh, yeah. Somewhat so, grounded, yeah. So yeah. it's going to be interesting uh, if that's the direction that that wrestling is going in, and and the and the the, the top of the industry is adopting the independent style. Then he's the right guy for it. I still don't. I like the more Nakamura Oscar mm -hmm. stuff, right? That's just my my preference. So. Well, I'm going to let you fans in on a little little secret. Uh, we have a lot of fun segments coming your way from the superstars in the NXT brand. Uh, Nug did an incredible interview with the Velveteen Dream that you guys won't want to miss. Johnny, Gar uh, Johnny Gargano and Candice. I like had him Jimmy, too. Yeah, Jimmy talked to them really well. So ask Aftermath right now, though. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you guys for your questions. Which cu current superstar has this mic skills to be a future GM? Quickly, Ooh. go. Uh, Xavier Woods, I think, has a future Ooh. on the microphone after he's, uh. his in-ring career is done. I think he'd be a phenomenal manager. Oh. Uh, a, ge a general manager? Oh, gosh. Go, go, you go first. Okay. Well, I was, I was, you're not going to like this. I like The Miz, but the only problem we're going to have uh, as a manager, uh, the only problem is the manager is there to enhance the talent. Miz may overshadow them, but he's a good Yeah, because he's screaming. Yeah. I want to go with Paige because I, you know, it, it, it saddens me that she can't compete right now, and I actually think that she'd do very well on the mic. Yeah. Anthony, quickly. Gosh, that's a, you caught me off guard with this one here. <laughs> um, my skills to be a general manager? Just a manager. Just a manager. Oh, just a manager. Um, oh, God. Uh, a manager. Just, just say maybe, yourself. Maybe, tune maybe, in maybe, next maybe, week and find out. Don't forget it. Yeah, you might have week. to tune in next week to find out Anthony's answer. Um, for now, guys, thanks for tuning into this show. Enjoy the upcoming um, SmackDown Live, and hopefully next week Anthony has his answer for you. Bye, guys. Um,